Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll take a close look at melatonin use in children and adolescents and whether its use can decrease risk for suicidality, bodily injuries, falls, and accidents. We know that sleep disorders in children and adolescents are associated with significantly increased risk of injury and suicidality. The first-line treatment for children and adolescents with sleep disturbances, of course, is behavioral interventions such as cognitive behavioral therapy, sleep hygiene, etc. In Sweden, where this study was conducted, melatonin is the most commonly prescribed medication for sleep in youth. And this study took advantage of the fact that while melatonin is commonly available over-the-counter in many countries, in Sweden, it was only available by prescription until 2020. In this study, the authors examined over 25,000 children and adolescents 6 to 18 years of age treated with melatonin. So a very large sample. So what did they find? There was a significantly decreased risk of self-harm following initiation of treatment with melatonin in female youth with depression and anxiety. So this raises the intriguing possibility that sleep interventions such as melatonin might have a role in reducing risk of self-harm, particularly in female adolescents with depression and anxiety. On the other hand, bodily injuries, falls, and accidents did not decrease in youth in whom melatonin was initiated. Despite how commonly melatonin is used, prescribed or not, or taken over the counter, this is the first study examining risk of intentional self-harm as well as unintentional injuries and accidents in youth treated with melatonin. Unintentional accidents were comparable the year before and after melatonin treatment, but the risk of self-harm and poisoning was highest in the month immediately prior to melatonin initiation and decreased right thereafter. Poisoning and self-harm obviously overlap, so the comparability in risk patterns with self-harm and poisoning is not surprising. Not surprisingly as well, psychiatric comorbidity was very high in this sample, with nearly 90% of youth prescribed melatonin having at least one psychiatric disorder. ADHD by far was the most common psychiatric comorbidity, accounting for over 50% of new melatonin users. ADHD being such a high comorbidity in youth prescribed melatonin is not surprising as well as ADHD itself is frequently associated with sleep disturbance independent of medication status and sleep disturbance is also often reported as a side effect of medication treatment of ADHD. The risk of self-harm and poisoning was driven most by adolescents suffering from depression and or anxiety with this being most pronounced in female adolescents. What's especially interesting is that when the investigators controlled for patients on antidepressants, there was a similar pattern of decrease in intentional self-harm rates following melatonin initiation in females. So this suggests that antidepressant use did not entirely explain these results. Now, I should note that the authors did not comment on patients who had received non-medication therapy, that is, CBT, psychotherapy, sleep hygiene, non-medication interventions for their depression or anxiety, and how this may have impacted or not their results. Something else that's interesting, in this study, females were significantly older than males, so this also might in part account for the self-harm findings in females being more pronounced than in males. Sex differences in age of initiation of melatonin may also be in part accounted for by diagnostic differences, with there being far more males than females with ADHD in this sample. Not unexpected, of course, given the higher prevalence of ADHD in boys than girls. This is also consistent with clinical practice and prior reports that melatonin is initiated earlier in males than in females, and boys more often combining melatonin with ADHD medications as ADHD itself and the medications used to treat ADHD have been reported to be associated with sleep disturbance. So males and females are often prescribed melatonin for entirely different reasons 
So this is not an apples versus apples comparison, more apples versus oranges. It's also important to point out that while risk of self-harm and poisoning among female adolescents was decreased after melatonin initiation, risks were still higher compared to the risk one year before melatonin initiation. In other words, the risk appeared to decrease with melatonin initiation, but it didn't vanish. So it still merits close monitoring, suicidality, poisoning, uh, risk of self-harm, whether or not a patient is treated with melatonin. And this might reflect the fact that previous self-harm events increase the risk for subsequent self-harm events. So what's the bottom line? Treating sleep disturbances associated with depression and anxiety in youth could decrease suicidality, intentional self-harm, and poisoning. That being said, the risk is still present even in those treated, and close monitoring is always indicated in this population. There are also some significant limitations in this study, namely that this analysis could not exclude or compare patients who were prescribed other sleep medications or who took other over-the-counter medications. The authors also did not investigate non-pharmacologic interventions such as CBT. Also, several of the authors have significant ties to industry, including being employees of industry that produce melatonin, having stock options in industry and companies manufacturing melatonin, as well as those manufacturing other psychotropic medications. Nonetheless, this is a promising lead and further controlled investigation is clearly warranted.